Welcome to Home Brewer TV. It's a new year and it's going to be an exciting year for everyone, I hope. I hope you guys are out there doing a whole bunch of brewing this year. Hey, if you're a stout lover, all the new BYO magazine, Stout's Delight. I love darker beers. This is a great magazine, guys. It's right here on our website. Click on BYO. It'll take you right to them. They even give you your first copy for free to see if you're going to like it. I've never known anybody who didn't. Well, we also have some pumps to talk about today. And of course, two great new beers to try just for you. There has been an awful lot of questions I've received from you about pumps. Well, there's two parts of this pump thing. I know it's a little expensive to buy pumps. They can cost well over $100 a piece. But once you get yourself hooked on pumps, you are absolutely going to love them. They will save your time, save energy. You aren't having to have something that's so far above your head to have gravity flow all the way down to the boil kettle. You can just basically make a flat brewing area and pump from one vessel to the other. But there's a couple things you want to think about when you're using these pumps. One of them is the pump needs to be located below the input source of liquid. They are not self-priming pumps. So you need to have it lower so that it will prime itself before you turn it on and it starts to go. Speaking of turning it on, it is so nice to have a switch right by your pump so you can turn your pump on and off easily. You do not want to run these pumps dry. And we'll look at the innards of the pumps in a little bit to understand why. Also, you want a pump with an outer flowing valve. In other words, the valve is on the output of the pump. This will help you as you are wanting to restrict the amount of flow, but still keeping the pump full and anti-cavitating. Another little thing about the pumps is they need to be able to drain well when you're done with your brew. Obviously, you're going to clean the pump out as best as you can. I always run a whole bunch of hot liquor water through, get it cleaned out as best I can, and then open everything up so the pump dries out. So, I'm going to take this pump off the bench. We're going in where it's a little warmer, and we're going to continue talking pumps. Well, I got the pump off the brew bench, and now I'm going to take it apart. Not completely, but I want to get the pump mechanism apart because sometimes that needs to be cleaned, and it's a very simple thing. On my March pump, I've got six screws that basically hold the pump section to the motor section. I'm going to remove the pump section. Quite simple. And that's all there is to it. These pumps use a magnetic coupling. So in other words, the impeller that's in the pump section isn't actually connected solid to the motor. So we don't know we need to go any further of taking the motor section apart. This is the large magnet that spins and it's what turns the impeller inside of our pump. So this is the pump section of our March pump with our outlet section that has the valve and our inlet. And then the pump comes further apart. Here is our impeller. It's heavy with a metal in here that it works with the magnet. Notice on our housing we have a rubber seal. We will always want to lubricate that rubber seal when we reassemble the pump. Also notice, inside this housing, there's no seals that the impellers would touch. And there's no seals on the impellers. That is why it is a non-self-priming pump. It needs to have fluid in there in order to do it in because it can't seal. It's a ceramic shaft that holds the impeller. And it's been simply as that. 
Now, you don't want to run this if it's dry because you will end up wearing away the end of this impeller and you can also damage the shaft. But it is a very simple pump that works exceedingly well in our brew bench. We got our pump back together and it's ready to go on the brew bench. One thing I didn't mention is most of these pumps come with just wire free end, no plug on it. Matter of fact, I wouldn't want it with a plug because I want to wire this in hard with a switch. It makes life so much easier. These pumps are a little pricey, no question about it. But when you start to take into consideration the amount of time, energy used without having these in a major tiered system or using siphons or whatever it might be, I think the pumps are well worth the money spent, certainly has saved my back, and it makes life so much nicer, and it's also cool when you just flip a switch and things happen. So, give the March pumps the thought. Let me tell you guys, oh, did it again. When I screw up, I screw up, and you guys let me know. I got a letter from one of our viewers that says, Gary, I just want to say I love your home brewing TV show. I'm glad to hear that. However, that was the big one. I have a bone to pick with you. More than once you have addressed your viewers as, hey guys, I'm a woman home brewer and I'd like you to include me when you talk to us. Oh dear. She goes on with a question plus. I have a question. I use plastic buckets for my fermenters. How do I harvest the yeast from the bucket? Thanks, Jill from Austin, Texas. Well, Jill, I've never been really good at being PC, so I do apologize to you. I know there are women brewers out there, and I think it's fantastic. Matter of fact, one of the beers we're going to sample today is a woman who is the head brewer for the brewery. And we also know there are two women who started Lost Coast Brewery. They were both home brewers also. So ladies, I apologize. I will try to be a little bit more considerate. If I screw up again, just let me know. Now to the question. With your, fer with your fermenter being a plastic bucket or a carboy, you really are going to be taking that yeast out the top or through the little hole in the carboy. So it's one of those cases in which you need to be just kind of slow and gentle. And because you can see what you're doing, you can see the different layers and how they're going to move about each other. So take your bucket and very slowly raise it and slowly make the pour in. You'll find the yeast will actually flow better than the trube and we don't want the troop. Now, if you get a little troop in there, it doesn't matter because we're going to wash it and help eliminate more of that troop in our final go at it. So that's how to use a bucket. If you're using a carboy, you're just going through that opening. So again, it's just a nice, gentle, slow. We don't want to mix it up. Jill from Austin, I hope that answered your question and I hope you accept my apology. We're back in the tasting room. Two more beers to sample today. Big bottles of beers. I kind of like that. Hey, this segment is sponsored by To Design Art. This lady's got some gorgeous jewelry, and I'm not a big jewelry person, but I have to admit, her stuff really is nice. So check her out. Click on her link below. Well, our first beer is from Mammoth Brewing Company. And this is in Mammoth, California. And I always try to get a hold of the brewery and talk to them personally before I do their beers. So when I called Mammoth, I got the owner. What a treat. This guy is excited about beers, making beers, selling beers, drinking beers. He just kind of loves beers. He's worked in the industry for many, many, many years in various ways 
But he found out in 19... Okay. In 1995, the brewery was opened. And it was opened along with Whiskey Creek Restaurant. They wanted their own little brewery pub part. And it was opened by a gentleman named Sam Walker. Well, it turns out Sam got to a point where he was ready to retire. And Sean Turner, the new owner, bought it in 2007. Heard Sam was retiring, thought, oh, what a great place to go and have a brewery. All the way from the San Francisco Bay Area up to Mammoth, they have a saying. Their beers are brewed with altitude. Their brewery is at 8,000 feet. Well, the one we're doing today is a nut brown double. It's got a 6.5 uh, alcohol content. And, you know, I'm almost a little scared of opening bottles anymore. I've screwed up so much. Well, let's give this a try. Well, it's pouring lovely. There we go. Ah, and I saved it. <laughs> mm, it has a... Okay, has a nice malty smell, but a lovely floral smell that goes along with it from the hops. Mm-hmm. Beautiful head. This is a gorgeous... You know, I keep saying that this is a gorgeous beer. Uh, I really guess I don't want to see one that's not. <laughs> Let's have it safe. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Double nut. No question about it. This has got some magnificent nutty, nutty flavors. Oh, do you remember uh, way back we had a fellow who had a, an almond beard, a home brewer that sent in. And I went, oh, this is delicious. The nut taste of the almonds. Well, this has got lovely nut tastes too, and it is flat delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. You're going to like this. Oh, that's nice. Beautiful mouthfeel. Oh. Well, before I pass out from all the excitement, our second beer is from Moylan's Brewing Company in Novato, California. This is another very cool brewery, and we're going to be doing Kilt Lifter. Now, I have to admit, I've got a little bit of the Irish in me, and I could be wearing a kilt. Well, you guys can't see it, so good thing. Well, when I called and talked here, I was talking and set up with the actual brewer. We're talking the main head brewer here, Denise. Denise was just delightful. She... She's been with them for quite a few years, and I loved her comment. When she went in, she wanted to put her signature on all of the beers, and she's done this. You can just tell, talking to her, how proud she is of herself, the brewery, everything involved. It's so nice to talk to someone that gets excited. Well, Moylan's was started by a gentleman named Brendan Moylan, and he started this lovely brewery. In 1995, they do about 4,000 barrels a year, and they're primarily a brew pub. So in other words, they sell most of their beers in the brew pub, but it is growing. They're doing about 32 states and five countries, and they're hoping to do more countries now. Anyway, let's get started on this. This one's a little bit bigger beer. This has got an 8%, 8% alcohol content and a 25 IBU and I love big beers so let's give this one a go lovely color now this is definitely in the style of a Scottish ale nice beautiful amber of course we 
If you guys ever find a beer that you think is ugly, I need to see a picture of it. Mmm. You can smell the malts. You can also get the lovely smell of the hops. This is a delightful smelling beer. Well, gentlemen and ladies. Mmm. Oh. Okay. This is very nice. A little hoppier than this one. But Denise made a comment. She wanted this, even though it's a big beer, she wanted a beer that you could have a second glass or a third glass because it just tastes nice. It's not really coily sweet. It just has a delicious, delicious flavor. Mm -hmm. You'll like it. You'll like both of these. You need to find them. Give them a try. I hope you're enjoying trying all these different ones. I know I have had a blast. And I certainly have enjoyed all the home brews that have been sent. Keep sending them. Well, I think we're going to give this one a two and a half thumbs up. And we're going to give this one definitely a two and a half thumbs up. These are delightful beers. I am sure you're going to enjoy them. So give them a try. I want to thank everybody for joining me today right here on Homebrewer TV. See, everybody, I'm going to catch on. Promise. Please check out our sponsors below. They're the reason that we're able to keep going. They're great and they could certainly use your support. I will see you all next week right here on Homebrewer TV. Oh, and please leave me some comments. Send me emails. Talk to me.